Let's do it. This Mics. will be the intro. We're mm -hmm. gonna show you how we got to here. We did uh, quite a bit of stuff. We did a EQT Vortex standard version. We did high pressure fuel pump upgrade, low pressure fuel pump upgrade. We did multi-port injection upgrade. There's a catch can setup going on it also. I think we did coils. We'd already done a clutch on it and it has the regular, oh, we did a front mount intercooler upgrade. Quite a bit of stuff at this. What, uh, what front mount? CTS on this one. Okay. Um, so that's all to get to where we are now on the dyno. We just finished the dyno session, but we're gonna show you how we got here. Okay, so on the Mark 7R, we got two of them in here right now, but uh, this one's getting a whole bunch of upgrades as we would have mentioned. The stock turbo is about to come out, the IS38, and we have the uh, EQT standard Vortex turbo. So these ones typically are good for, depending on the fueling requirements and stuff, anywhere from about 400 to 500 wheel horsepower. Um, we're doing actually all the fueling requirements on this one, so we still will be on 91. We may try something else. There you go, EQT. Um, we may try something else when it comes to the, uh, you know, trying to make the most we can out of it. We may put some ethanol in it or something like that, but we have a whole bunch of upgrades to do to this one. Multi-port injection, um, low pressure, fuel pump, high pressure fuel pump, inner front mount intercooler we gotta do as well. And obviously the turbo swap, few sensors. There's a whole bunch going on with this one. We're gonna keep you up to date as we go through it. First thing though, is putting the turbo on it. So the other turbo is just about to come out. And we're gonna swap over the actuator and calibrate it and all that stuff. So we're just adjusting the actuator now. We put it on the new EQT turbo. Keep going, Ben. A little bit more. Keep going. That's that's good. Actually, back it up just a wee bit. Can you lock it like that? And then we uh, go here. Go here. Oh, we're ready to go. Oh, you got a bit of a pool here. Oh, it'd be good to sweep that away from going in the dyno. So, turbos here. We just got a extension cable a harness basically adapter to plug into the car so we can easily adjust the actuator without it being in behind the vehicle or being behind the engine I should say because it's a huge pain in the butt. So we got all that done, it's ready to go back in. Continuing on with this Mark 7R, obviously uh, it's torn apart for the front mount intercooler and we're trying to do the, all the other stuff at the same time to kind of, you know, streamline everything. So we got the new rail in for the multi-port injection. We obviously still got to clean stuff up a bit, but the new, the intake manifold's been off as you would have seen. We've modified it to fit the new rail. Uh, we still got to do up the lines and stuff like that, but uh, I'll put that there kind of explain everything. So we still got to um, connect the fuel lines in. I still got to pull the high pressure fuel pump off uh, and do the install for that. The front mount intercooler, I'm about to do that now, so I'll probably set the time lapse up while we tear this apart. And then the last thing really is to do the low pressure fuel pump, which I'll probably show you some of that as well. But we're getting closer. There's a few more things to do. I'll have the intercooler uh, in and the front end of the car back together here this afternoon so it'll start looking like an, a car again. Also got the upgraded uh, map sensors, both of them put in. Um, so we're getting close. It's just a little bit more to go yet. So let's get to it.
Okay, so I actually stopped in the middle of reassembly on the front end because I had to, uh, I have to pin some wires into the harness, the factory harness for the multi-port injection. So I just figured leaving the headlight out and uh, would just give me a lot more room and I wouldn't have to uh, struggle as much. So I just got to pin um, these five wires and then an additional power wire. So you got to take the back of the connector off and then start depinning some of the stuff because there's little pegs in, in there. So you got to take those out and then slowly one by one ensure you're putting those into the right pin location. Then once you're all done, you can tidy everything up, click everything back together. There's going to be a power wire that goes up into the fuse panel as well. Uh, but that's for the multi-port stuff, so we're just going to continue on. Okay, so now we just have the last, the power wire for the injector harness. So we got the fuse panel torn apart. You, you basically got to just take this apart and there's, you got to feed that wire up into here and you're going to fuse it and then that will give power to the four new injectors and uh, should be ready to go for that part of it. We still got a low pressure fuel pump to do and the front end to put on. Okay, the GoPro died, so I didn't get to film any of that. It's so dramatic. Um, so, basically to rebuild the high pressure fuel pump, you need a bearing separator. And you're basically going to like press off this little pin here um, to get the old stuff out. And then you're going to, this is an Autotech rebuild kit. You're going to put the new stuff in and you're going to make sure the keepers are in place make sure everything's nice and clean when you're doing it um, you do need a special tool in order to get the pump apart because it's basically inverted um, I don't know what size would be maybe a 23 or something like that but either way get that apart rebuilt it's time to go back in the car we just have the low pressure fuel pump to do after this and a couple lines and stuff like that so we got her all back together um, I still have to do the low pressure fuel pump, but I am going to flash it now while I have it uh, basically ready to fire because I want to uh, get it ready for the dyno tomorrow. So the dyno is not tomorrow, but I want to get it ready. Um, so I'm going to move it over and I'll do the low pressure fuel pump uh, probably tomorrow. So uh, high pressure fuel pumps in and down, the lines are ran. Most of the stuff's tucked away. I got the engine cover off for now just to look for leaks and stuff as we uh, pressurize the system and now it's time to flash the EQT uh, Vortex standard file that we got. We are going to be doing a whole bunch of tuning and stuff to this thing uh, with Ed from EQT. So now we're going to uh, we got the battery charger hooked up to it and we're ready to start flashing it. So I'm going to get that ready to go and we'll uh, get this thing programmed. One thing that you should know that when you go to flash the, the Cobb access board file, whether it's an EQT file or anything to do with Cobb access board, you want to make sure the car is back to stock programming. These things don't like to write over existing files, so if you have an existing tune on the car, you want to make sure that you get it put back to stock. So it does give you a pretty good warning um, before doing so. This car did have a custom tune on it which we had the customer uh, get back, put back to stock so that we didn't run into any issues when trying to flash this. So we are all good to flash it. We're all good to, uh, we have the battery charger connected. So now it's just gonna do some thinking. We have the file selected and uh, we're just gonna wait for it to read. Essentially it reads the ECU first and then it's gonna flash the file to the car and then we can fire it up for the first time since we've done all these mods. Okay, so she's alive. Uh, I just checked for leaks and everything before grabbing the camera. All looks good. Put the cover back on. It's just going to burn off all the old uh, oil and coolant and handprints all over the exhaust and the turbo. So now that it's running on the new file, we're just going to do the low pressure fuel pump and we'll be ready for the dive. Um, for those who have done these low pressure fuel pumps in these hours, they're not that fun. I've done a few but they're not that common to do around here anyway, so they definitely take some effort to get the old pump out and the new uh, pump in. This pump here I think is good for like 650 to 700 horsepower. Anyways, it's all apart. There's a million things you gotta do. 
There's a million things you gotta do to take it apart and a million things you gotta do to put it back together. But it's all ready to go back in the car. So let's get to it. Okay, we're ready for our first run on the new setup. This is probably gonna be lower power uh, just because we gotta work through the tune. We got Ed from EQT on the hook here. So we're gonna start doing some logs and just going back and forth and seeing what we can get out of this thing. So this is just the first run. This thing's loud, by the way. First one was 380, I believe, I said. So we have an update. We also swapped out the plugs. Um, something a bit better than what was in here. And uh, we're ready to go. Okay, so we're in the 400 Club. That one did 403, 370 torque. Yeah. Forgot to turn the fans on the last run, so that kind of hurt that run a little bit. So we'll see what we got out of this one. It is a new file also, so hopefully we see a little bit more jam yet. Looking pretty good. 431. We have to remember everyone, this is on 91, Canadian 91, which is complete garbage. There's no ethanol in this. 431, 400 on the old pump, pretty good. 435, oh, four. Wait. Oh, I was looking at the torque, even yeah. better. That's four, sick. 400 torque, yeah. Awesome. 435, 400 torque on the crappy, crappy 91. Yeah, no, that's awesome. Yeah. Really good. Yeah. So we might have another revision or two uh, yet, but we're getting close to having this wrapped up. Four thirty-four, four oh seven torque. Just nutty. 
pretty safe to say this is pretty where we're ending up around 435. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Yeah, a little, oh, more, a little more torque that time. Yeah, just a little, little spike at the top at the beginning there, oh, but okay. um, this might be it. Okay, so we didn't have this car in the dyno at the beginning of these mods, but I have had this car in the dyno maybe early this year or last year, late last year. It was last year. Um, it had a custom tune on it. It did 329, 337 torque. What, what custom? Would have been like stage two, don't know the name, don't okay. know. Don't care. Just custom, sort of. Um, it, tip, it dynoed Comparatively to the other stage two cars that we typically do, it was down a little bit on uh, horsepower um, comparatively. Like they typically do like 330 to 350-ish, depending on the mods, with like R91, all that sort of stuff. Mm. But it was still clean. The guy had a lot of fun with it. He's gone out and done lots of playing around with it. Um, so now with all the mods, as you would have seen, We've gained over 100 wheel horsepower. So our highest run was 435. Actually, we've had plenty of runs at 434 to 435. Uh, 434 and 407 torque. And if you look at the torque, it is like dead flat. And it's also like 3,700 RPM, you have 400 foot pounds of torque. It's insane. Well. It, well, on paper it's the same, or on screen. We're gonna, paper screen? We're gonna, paper screen. It's going to feel the same. Yeah, so, I mean, the, we kind of compared this earlier to Kayla's R32, which is obviously a 3.2 liter. Yeah, I don't want to talk about it. VR, six cylinder, with a bigger turbo, and this old R would definitely give it a run for its money. That's for sure. Right now. Right now, <laughs> right now, because the R32 is broken in a million pieces. Um, this is on 91. This no ethanol content. I would have said this probably 20 times in the video. 91, R on 91 is junk. Ed, who was behind the keys on this, because this is a uh, Cobb Access Sport. That's another thing I forgot to mention. Cobb Access Sport with DQT. Um, he was saying basically the same stuff. Your so fuel, he was sending you some files. To, yeah, yeah, our fuel know. is really trashy, and which we already know, but it's good to see other people see how trashy our fuel is. So when people look on the internet and see what kind of numbers others are making, we're just dealing with a major handicap in the fuel department. So this same setup with ethanol, like a, when I was chatting with Ed, like an E50 blend, he's saying it should make right around the 500 horsepower mark. I don't know if we'll get to that. Uh, we have the fueling upgrades to be able to do it. It's just a matter of, you know, talking to the customer and making sure if he wants to do it. Ethanol is not readily available here for us. So if he does do it, he's going to either have to buy a barrel of it or maybe we can spare some here and there for him from the stuff we use in our drag car. But we're going to go take this for a ride now. And um, Clayton, actually has almost this exact same car as a daily, Clayton and Kayla. So we may put Clayton in the driver's seat at some point, but we do got to do another log or two for EQT, for Ed, um, just to make sure everything's good on the street. So that's what we're going to do now. So let's get to some in-car footage. We got to remember to log. We're just not here to have fun. Well. Are you ready for that? No, not really. Clayton, you filming? I'm filming. Do you have a smile? What? Do you have a smile? Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. Always. So we, no, not always. Always. But after the drive. Yeah. Um, we don't know if you'll see any of the footage. Clayton will have to dig through it. We don't want anything incriminating yourself. Although we drove all the way to Mexico, we still, there's a reason I bought a dyno so that I'm not out doing this stuff on the street. Um, Definitely fun car. Definitely going to surprise a lot of people. I need to give a shout out to Ed for working through this one with us. We may, depending what the customer wants to do, we may come back for uh, ethanol tune. We don't know yet. Clearly it's making a lot more power than it did when it first came here. 
Um, it's just a matter of how much further he wants to push it because there's definitely more power to be had with ethanol as we've proven in previous videos and as EQT's proven plenty of times on these cars. So Clayton, what are we forgetting? I don't, I don't know, just still smiling. It's a fun yeah, car. It's definitely a fun car. Defin uh, aside from the sound, um, this thing is the ultimate sleeper really. Yeah. And I know there's guys out there making more horsepower than this, but for a 91 octane car making this kind of power that in a you, four door golf. Wait, that you can daily, no problem. No problem dailying it. So um, all the links to everything that was in this build is in the description if anyone's looking to get anything. Um, hit us up. Hit us up, yeah. We got a lot of it in stock and the stuff that may not be in stock is generally only a couple of days away for us. So if you have any questions or comments, be sure to ask below and don't forget to like and subscribe and we'll see you in the next video. So this one, I don't know, this thing to start over. What are you doing? Get out of here. Are you sweaty? That's a lot. It's warm. Yeah. This car, okay Ben, you'll have to just be a little bit quiet. Okay, boss. All right. Fired up. Don't enjoy it. It's already warmed up, so you can literally just start beating on it. Sweet. The car used to rev to like 65. Yeah. It goes to like almost 75 now. Okay. Oh, that turbo sound. Oh, I'm in love. It's very hard to get the window.